and Charlie Neal, and we glad you could join us for this uh, intersectional matchup. And it's been all Seton Hall. You're a coach. You take your team in the locker room. You're down 21 points. What do you say? Well, I think they had a tough, tough time shooting the basketball in the first half. They had some pretty good inside presence in Morgan State. They got the ball inside, but the ball just wouldn't drop for them, Charlie. I go back and say, hey, fellas, let's keep getting the ball inside. Mm -hmm. It's going to drop for us the second half. Get the butterflies out of here. It's opening day here. Right. It's their first home game. They got some young kids out there, new kids. Butterflies are flowing in their stomach. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Relax. Have a good time. Go out and play like we're capable of playing. Because they played Virginia extremely well in their last game out. Well, let's look at some of the first half highlights. And it's been all Seton Hall. They lead it by 21. As you look at Eugene Harvey, we talked about the freshman. Came in averaging five and a half assists. But then Bill Meyer with the work. Well, Grant Bill Meyer has been, has been the surprise of the day, Charlie. He's just come in here and just taken over this basketball game inside. And I give Gonzo, Bobby Gonzalez from, from Seton Hall a lot of credit for, for starting in the day. He knew he had a size advantage with Grant Bill Meyer. And he really got the ball inside. There you can see Bobby giving him a slap in the back of the head. And I'll tell you what, he did a tremendous job the first half. And I'm, I'm sure they're going to go back right to that same thing in the beginning of the second half because the inside presence has been the difference in the game. Now you look at the stats, the shooting percentage for Morgan State, just under 18%. They came into the game averaging 42% from the field. And that is the reason why they're down by 21 points here at halftime. We're at halftime at Hill Fieldhouse. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. One twenty, our halftime score. Pirates of Seton Hall with a 21-point advantage over the Bears of Morgan State. And you look at the marquee matchups early on, and one of the things that stands out in my mind is the rebound advantage that Seton Hall has, a 10-rebound edge in the game so far. Charlie, Seton Hall has controlled the inside of the basketball game, and that's been the difference. That's why they have the big lead right now, the inside presence of Grant Billmore, uh, the inside rebounding, and second shots. And the, you gotta get the you gotta get the ball inside, and that's what that's what Seton Hall's doing right now. Let's look at the marquee matchups between Lang and Timus, or Timus rather. Yeah, Lang, Lang is, is Seton Hall's leading scorer, uh, averaging 22 points a game coming into today's contest. He has eight at the half. He's done a great job. Besides getting points, he's done a tremendous job of getting on the glass, and he's got he's got eight rebounds for him at halftime, and that's pretty good for for a guard and a guy that's not a real inside presence. 
and then Timmis has done a tremendous job of getting to the free throw line. He was three for six from the field and got to the free throw line and had a nice soft touch at the free throw line, going five for six. And there you see the scoring points. Lang with six points, averaging 22, and he'll have to do a lot in the second half to make up for that, but 11 points for Mr. Timmis to lead the Bears of Morgan State. Story of this ball game so far has been it's been all Seton Hall. When you look at the rebounding, we talked about it 23 uh, to 13 edge right there. As you look at the leading scores, look at all those guys for spreading the wealth around for Seton Hall. 8 6 6 6 6 in Morgan State. Timmis is leading his team. Also, the shooting percentage 57% for Seton Hall, only 17% for Morgan State, and then the three-point shots, two for six for Seton Hall, 0 for seven for Morgan State. Well, that'll, that'll do you in every time. Definitely the difference in the first half, Charlie, is, you know, 57% from the field with Seton Hall compared to 17% from Morgan State. Morgan State cannot get the ball to drop. I think they want to try to take it inside the second half, which they try to do right there. I think they have to start going inside, try to get contact, get to the free throw line a bit. Get the butterflies out. Maybe some of those jump shots will fall for Morgan State oh, here in the second half. 41-22 is the score. Two points for Morgan to start the second half. They were trailing by nine to nothing. They were down by 21 at the half. 41 to 20. The biggest deficit so far today. This one goes off for. Of the hands of one of the Seton Hall players, and Morgan State will get the ball back. Not a good start for Seton Hall. No. Two, two possessions, two turnovers. That's not the way you want to come out of the locker room at halftime. Both teams had eight turnovers in the first half. I thought both, both teams took care of the basketball pretty good against both teams played pressure defense. Full court. First half, both teams handled the pressure extremely well. Jamar Smith goes in strong, but just can't get it to fall for it. Can't get the ball to, foul, to fall for him at all. Harvey at the other end, this is inside too. I was going to say maybe it's that basket, but Lang proved, the, proved me wrong. <laughs> Lang cleans up on the glass, getting second shot opportunities. 
And a block from behind in the battle for the loose ball. Timmis comes out with it, goes along the baseline, and two. Oh, I'm a big billboard block of that shot, Charlie. The big guy inside is having a fun time today. He's working extremely hard, got the shot block. I'd give big Grant Bill Marshall credit on that one. But Harvey can go to the hole. Eugene Harvey's a fine look.